Het alles is hij. Die grote tijd is jetzt angebrochen. Deutschland is nun erwacht. Die Macht haben wir nun in Deutschland gewonnen. Nun gilt es, das deutsche Volk zu gewinnen. Ich weiß es, meine Kameraden. Es ist euch wohl oft schwer gefallen, wenn ihr meint, es müsse nun um den Wandel kommen. Und er kann nicht und immer wieder muss er euch da fehlgerichtet werden. Es muss weiter gekämpft werden. Es geht nicht. Ihr dürft nicht handeln. Ihr müsst gehorchen. Ihr müsst euch fügen. Ihr müsst euch diesem unharten Zwang beugen. In some ways, but I think that'd be kind of obvious if you're being treated like that, you would resist. Yes, I would assume, since they probably didn't have weapons in concentration camps. Uh, I think they did, without the use of any kind of force or arms. So. Um, I think if they had arms, they used arms, but if they didn't, then they would try to resist with arms. Probably if they were told to, told to do something that they would not do it or do the opposite. Um, kind of little things to get on the guards' nerves, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure people tested the limits, though they were under the power of people who had weapons and probably were threatening their lives. I would assume that people that were of that mindset that this was wrong and thought they should do something about it, possibly... I don't know. They bonded together and worked as a team. Well, one guy played the piano. Trying to um, still stay true to their beliefs. I would think trying to stick together, trying to keep traditional, I don't know, song, games, religion, prayer, times when, when, you know, holidays, things like that, and the way anyone, the way the slaves in the South were able to keep their humanity after being persecuted for so long. In the period between World War I and World War II, there were many political parties competing for power in Germany. By 1933, Nazis had established themselves in government. It was dangerous to be a member of any opposing party. Many were beaten or killed for speaking out against the Nazis. Many opposition parties were destroyed or outlawed by the Nazis, but some survived and became underground resistance groups. The focus for some shifted from political standpoints to providing food, receiving and transmitting news and information, and boosting morale. Opposition newspapers were forbidden, but almost every underground party published one. The practice of Judaism was illegal, yet during the Holocaust, many Jews continued their religious traditions secretly. Community and individual worship, religious studies, and religious teaching continued underground. Education went underground as well. Throughout German-occupied Europe, small groups of children met daily in makeshift classrooms. Many of these classrooms and ceremonies were held in secret, in cellars, attics, and back rooms, as others stood guard. In Warsaw alone, in 1940, 600 Jewish prayer groups existed. Prayer helped sustain morale, supplied spiritual comfort, and once again, gave them an identity to fight the dehumanizing Nazis with. Other forms of resistance in concentration camps consisted of efforts organized by the underground to inform the world about Nazi brutality, the cruel physical conditions, and the Nazi systematic annihilation of Jews in the extermination camps. Frieda Weinman recalls an attempt to inform the outside as a prisoner of Auschwitz-Birkenau. 
we saw very near us, perhaps a few meters away. These, some still standing, others not standing anymore, being pulled with cords on their legs. No. Perhaps 20 people, 30 people, I don't know how many there were. They were being dragged back to the crematoriums. And that's when we heard that this was a, so a part of the Sonderkommando who had tried to escape, who were caught nearly at the end, and they nearly escaped, were dragged back and were and were, and were right away taken to the crematorium. That was a group of people that tried to escape to again tell the world what was happening and were caught and also eliminated. Before Auschwitz was fitted with gas chambers for the systematic murder of Jews in late 1941, it served as a concentration camp primarily for Polish prisoners including officers who served as leaders of the early resistance groups. Poles who had gained positions in the infirmary and administrative offices were well placed for resistance activities. They were also in the best position to make contact with free Poles who lived nearby and worked in the camp, as well as with Polish resistance groups. They could occasionally use these perks to alleviate the suffering of other inmates. Many people think that the best way to escape war is to dwell upon its horrors and to imprint them vividly upon the minds of the younger generation. 